This message is brought to you by the letter P for proxy. He doesn't have anything to say. He just says hi. So in this scene right here, I have a series of objects and they're all separate objects. They're all individual objects, unique objects. However, none of them have modifiers because if you have modifiers on them, it's not gonna work so good with dice. But I'm gonna select everything and under mesh tools, if we go under dice, we see that we now have what's called multi-dice. So we're gonna turn this onto the Z axis and we'll press three to put more segments in it. And from here, I'm gonna go under modifier under the Q menu and we're just gonna add a lattice. And after selecting a lattice, I can press Q and add additional segments, except in this case, I want to add them onto Z. But if we tap into edit mode and we grab this, this collection of different objects can now be deformed uniformly after being diced with I think I mispronounced all of that. Now this object can be deformed using the power of dice and lattice, which now fits around objects better. But being able to create parts like this on the fly is just exactly what I need for robot design. And this is one of the things I was meaning to get in the last update. And I'm just so proud of the work of Luf and Bongiorno for their work on dice and lattice and getting it working in this latest version so i hope everybody gets in there and gives it a try of course with circles you know different rules apply so you may have to get rather creative you know let's say i really really wanted this to work out you know i'll select that but we'll go into modifier stack and we'll just turn this on because i just can't let that live and we could just scale that to just make that fit so now that cylinder almost makes it you know not the best way but you know, we are playing by lattice rules here, so we do have to get creative. So here I'll select this, and we'll actually turn on this to show in edit mode. And we'll just scale that down until it fits just right. Maybe even S, X, or let's try scaling it like so. And we'll bring it in. And we have an almost perfect circle. But of course, you know, when it comes to lattices, lattices, play by their own rules. So you do have to get creative with how you make them work. In fact, as I look at this, I can tell you right now that there's an additional edge there that isn't needed. And also right here, there's an additional edge that isn't needed. So just know that when you use dice, there is a degree of cleanup that may be needed in addition to dealing with your distortions, but just know that multi-dice is here for you. So in addition to multi-dice, there's also been improvements to material, which can be found in the Alt-M menu. So if you go under here and you look at material scroll, you can notice that now control clicking will allow you to scroll through blank materials and you can see what blank materials are being generated. However, in the event that you wanna see what's going on in your look dev, you can press tab and it'll jump over to look dev. You can press tab again, it'll jump over to render. You can press tab again, it'll jump back to solid. Press tab and go to look dev and actually see what kind of material you're getting here. However, materials are best shown when there's a bevel involved. So I like to slap a bevel on it, get the shading just right, and just get in here and control click. And you can just scroll through endless combinations of materials to just find the perfect material for you. In fact, if we go back to solid mode, then in this mode, we're kind of finding the perfect material for material blocking. But we go and look dev, we can actually see what we're getting here. And this was one of the things that I really wanted with blank material ever since it was first created. Right here, I'm pressing one to see if I can get this angle caught, but it looks like we probably need to go to 20. And it looks like now we can actually catch that angle. And with this one, we'll go back into blank material scroll and we'll control click it. And another thing I wanna bring up is we don't have to actually control click blank material scroll or material scroll. Uh, we can just click it and it'll scroll through the materials that exist, which is material one, material two. And that's because there is a material cleanup that happens after the operation where we remove all the junk materials that are created through the iterative scroll. However, if we press B, then now we're back in business scrolling materials that we've never seen before. And I just love this material and we're just gonna stick with it. And as you can see, this just makes the texturing process just something fun right here. We'll press B jump to blank and we'll just find something metallic like like so really not metallic a little more pearlescent when you get down to it but we'll go to this one control click and just scroll through those blank materials and i actually like this one so i can actually scroll backwards and find the blank material that i wanted 
And if we look at our Alt M material submenu, we see that our material list is nice and clean. I mean, of course, there's a lot of numbers missing, but you know, uh, we like material three, we like material nine, I like material 13, I loved material 35, and I don't, don't even get me started on material number 62, but because of the power of scrolling, we can now actually get to number 62 and find out if material 62 is the material that we want, and it turns out that we did. So now you can get in and just materialize your models, just texture them in a jiffy. In fact, you know, I'm not really a big fan of this piece. So let's just get in here and we'll press B and just scroll through combinations we've never seen before. And when there's a bevel, it just looks so much better. And this is our final result here. So I press Alt V, turn off overlays. And this is something we were able to create in less than three minutes.